Hello and welcome to another live conversation with me, your host, Nikki Bird. Um, I came across something today that um, actually gave me the idea for the, the conversation today. Um, you know, thinking about the different types of problems that we all have. You know, there is nobody under the face of the sun without a problem. There is no one who isn't dealing with one challenge or the other, you know. There is no one who isn't facing one difficulty or the other, all right. Um, but the worst, the worst kind of problem to have is the one you don't know you have. Yeah. So that got me thinking, really, like, how many people, you know, are hitting their head against the wall, trying to find a solution for one problem or the other, um, but are completely missing the mark because they are solving a different problem. There is something that is causing maybe the chaos in their lives that they are not even aware of, you know. So I felt, uh, I think this would be an interesting conversation to have. You know, the worst kind of problem a person can have is the problem they don't know they have. You cannot solve a problem you don't know you have. You cannot solve a problem you are not aware of. And that is what makes it the worst kind of problem to deal with. Because the knowledge of the problem, at least it's, it's halfway to solving it. At least you know what is wrong, right? It's like, it's like feeling sick, but you cannot really put a finger on what is wrong with you. But you know, you know what? I'm not feeling okay. But you don't know, is it a headache? Is it a stomach ache? You don't know, is it toothache? You don't know, is it, you don't even know what exactly is wrong, but you just know something is wrong. So I think for me, that is really the worst kind of problem a person can have. Yes, yeah, some people may have problems of, you know, unable to afford uh, certain things, especially around this, this time with so much festivities going around. Some people may not be able to see their families, you know, since the end of the year. Some people may not be able to travel as their plan, but at least they know what the problem is. They know, okay, my problem is I'm not able to travel for one reason or the other. My problem is, okay, I'm walking through the holidays. My, my problem is um, I didn't get my, my son or my daughter what I promised. At least you know your problem. <laughs> you know exactly what the problem is. Some people are sick right now. They are in hospital, right? And there are those that the doctors know exactly what is wrong with them. So once the doctor diagnoses you, okay, this is what is wrong with you, then they move to the next step, which is try now to treat, to give you treatment for whatever is wrong with you. But there are also those that are in hospitals and doctors are unable to pinpoint exactly what is wrong with them. I think that's the worst kind of problem to have. And the conversation that I wanted us to have today is really not even about sickness, okay? I'm just building this so that we understand uh, where I'm going to with having a problem. You don't even know you have it, all right? Imagine someone being in hospital, maybe they have been there for weeks or months or years, and the doctors are unable to put a finger on what is wrong with that patient. Just imagine how frustrating it can be, how terrifying it can be. And there are people that have been in that position for such a long time, and they ended up dying without 
an actual diagnosis of what was wrong with them. And it's quite sad. It's really a sad situation to be in, you know. So once again, as if you're joining me, you can hit the like button and share uh, this conversation with your network. There may be someone within your network that will find this valuable. As we are all planning and excited and, you know, writing down our resolutions for next year, I felt like this was a timely conversation because we need to know or look much deeper within to find out what resolutions am I really going to be focusing on this year? What problems am I really going to be focusing on solving about my life this year? And if you are missing some of the problems, you will see that you will repeat some of the experiences and some of the outcomes you've had you know, maybe this year or the previous years, you will see that you might continually repeat some of those outcomes that you are not happy with until you put a finger to exactly what is wrong. Until you are able to put a finger to exactly what the problem is. So it is very important, very important to find out what the real problem is. A lot of people are just finding solutions to symptoms. They are finding solutions to what they think could be wrong, but it's really not what is wrong. So I think that the conversation we had a few days ago around curiosity is really what led me to this, okay? Because I, it is out of curiosity when you're constantly curious about yourself, about life, about certain situations that you can be able to really put a finger on what is on certain areas about your life, you know. It might be a problem in business, it might be a problem with your family, it might be a problem um, with your job, your career. It might be different types of problems, okay? It might even be a problem with your marriage, but unless you are able to properly diagnose what the problem is, you are going to be treating the symptoms. And the worst kind of problem a person can have is the problem they don't know they have. Once again, if you're joining me, hit the like button, share with your network. Someone may find this, you know, beneficiary to them. Sharing is caring, right? <laughs> All right. Um, let me tell you a quick story uh, before we carry on. Uh, not, um, yeah, there was a time when I was still married, right? For those who know me, they know that I was once married. I'm now divorced. When I was still married, I remember an incident that happened uh, with my ex-husband. We went somewhere... And we were having a conversation and, you know, people were talking about challenges in marriage and things like that. And he said something. He said, I talk too much. <laughs> Which those of you who know me already know that's true, right? Yeah, I talk, I talk too much. And when he said that, the person that we were having this conversation with leaned towards him and really looked him in the eye and said, you have a good problem. And I'm like, what does it mean? And then he explained for that and said, you have a good problem that your wife talks, talks too much. Because at least you know what is on her mind. At least in the course of expressing whatever she's talking about, you can have a clue, you know, on what is on her mind. At the time, I did not understand what this man was talking about. I just felt like, huh? why, why does he think talking too much is a good problem? while the person I'm with thinks it's a horrible experience. Anyway, now, when I interacted, when I started interacting with the wife of the man who made that remark, I understood what he was talking about. The wife is so quiet that you could be with her for hours and she, wouldn't, and she would barely say a word to you. So at some point you start thinking, did I do something wrong? <laughs> like literally you start checking yourself, like what did I do wrong? 
So it was only from interacting with his wife that I understood, oh, I guess this is what he meant because I'm here and I'm thinking maybe I did something wrong, maybe I said something wrong. But it just seemed like that's naturally who she is. Doesn't talk, say few words, as few as possible. So, so anyway, I guess where I was going with the story is that with the man, with her husband, he could not put a finger on what was wrong. He was constantly, you know, feeling like he's walking on eggshells, not knowing what is wrong or if everything is fine or if everything is wrong based on maybe the personality of the wife, right? So it may, it may feel like um, the story is completely not related to the conversation, but I'm sure you get what I'm trying to say when you are in that place where you can barely, hardly put a finger to what is wrong. But you just know something is wrong. You know, you just know something is wrong, but you're like, well, what is wrong? But you don't know what is wrong. It's, it's a horrible place to be in. So the worst problem a person can have is the problem they don't know they have. Now, I want to dial in on this. Uh, it's, it's really not about sickness or not about being able to diagnose what is wrong with someone's health. But it's more about us, all right, as an individual. We all want to be better versions of ourselves, right? At least for me. I want to be a better version of myself. I constantly, you know, ask difficult questions about me. And I love hanging around people who can be like, um, what is it called? A A rear view mirror for me, you know, because... There are certain problems, no matter how good we are, at checking ourselves. There are certain things you meet about us and it would take a good friend, a good family member to tell you, hey, this thing you're doing is not okay. And then you have to sit back and be like, oh, okay, I didn't realize. So we need people who can point us in the right direction, people who can act like, you know, a real view mirror. Because when you are driving, you are looking right ahead. You need that mirror that can show you what is happening behind you. And there are those people that act like that mirror, right, for you to be able to understand and diagnose and put a finger to certain problems in your life that you are unaware of. So it's one way of you understanding that. Like I spoke on curiosity the other day and I was speaking on different types of curiosity. One of the highlights of the curiosities for me was emotional curiosity, being able to introspect and ask yourself certain questions in regards to how you feel, in regards to your emotions and things like that. It is through asking those type of questions that you can be able to pin or put a finger on certain problems or certain challenges in your life that you had missed out or no, all throughout your life, all throughout the years. But if you are not able to be curious and ask questions, uh, even uncomfortable questions, if you are not able to do that, then you will likely go through life with problems that you don't know exist, problems that will hinder you, problems in your personality that may cause you to lose a job, problems in your personality that may cause you to lose a marriage, problems in your personality that may cause you to lose a business and all of that to lose friendships you know but unless you are able to put a finger and like okay i think i need to fix this about myself you are constantly going to have the same result over and over and over and over so once again as we all planning to get into the new year and we are you know having these amazing new year resolutions we should be able to introspect to see if we can put a finger Maybe it is something we've been missing over the years. It's a difficult work to do. You know, it's a difficult work to do. Uh, Someone said, yeah, but it's difficult. But it's difficult. People don't usually want to tell you the truth about who you are. So they fake it. Even if you ask, oh, my God, I love this. I love this remark. Thank you for actually bringing this up. Yes, there are people that will know something is wrong. Or they don't like certain aspects, you know, of your personality. And they will rather avoid you, you know, rather than come close and say, you know what, 
maybe you need to fix this a little bit. Just maybe you need to tone this down, you know. And I remember my son, my son is 14 and I'm trying to teach him about, you know, reflections and self-awareness and things like that. And, you know, taking corrections and things. And I told him, any friend who comes to you and say, what you did is wrong or I didn't like what you did, hold that friend dear. Any friend who comes to you and point out something about you that no one else has pointed. Everyone is just faking it, you know. Everyone is just avoiding you and you don't even know what is wrong. But if someone is bold enough to come to you and say, yeah, I think you need to a little bit, you know. I told him, value those type of friendships. Because most people, what they do is to avoid you. Most people, what they do is gossip about that thing they don't like about you. They won't tell you. And that's horrible to have friends like that. I like friends who check me, call me out, tell me, hey, Nikki, I think you need to fix it here. You know. So, yeah, what you, what you said in the comment is very, it's really important. It's really true. And very relatable to a lot of people. They just, they just fake it. Those are fake friends, really. You know, if you have friends that are not telling you the truth, they are really fake friends. Yes, you are right. Uh, the comment says nobody is perfect, but we all need uh, those corrections. Yeah, we do. We do. Otherwise, we are going to go through life um, not understanding exactly where we can make improvements. We're going to go through life not understanding where we can fix. It's the same like being in hospital. You know you are sick, but you don't know what exactly is wrong. And the doctors cannot find what is wrong with you. Imagine, imagine that you are sick. And you don't know what is wrong with you. And you went to the hospital and the doctor eventually found out or the doctor was able to diagnose what is wrong and did not tell you. Just think about it. That you're in hospital, your doctor knows what is wrong and your doctor kept that information from you. And information that would help you. Just that mental torture of not knowing what is wrong. But your doctor knows this is what is wrong. But your doctor refuses to tell you for whatever reason. That is how some friends are. Those are not friends. People who cannot help you grow. People who cannot help you improve. You know, even if I know it's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. It's a very uncomfortable conversation to have. But if these people are truly, truly your friends, they will tell you. If your family members care about you, they will tell you. That is on their side. Now, on back to you. When people point out what is what they are uncomfortable with, I don't want to say what's wrong. When people point out what they are, what they feel you need to adjust, how do you react to that? That may be some of the reason people would just decide, I'd rather keep quiet. <laughs> I don't want to go to war. <laughs> I would rather not go to battle with this one. I'd rather keep quiet or I'd rather just move away or I'd rather end the friendship or I'd rather, you know, just tiptoe and walk on eggshells because of the reaction that you will get. You understand what I mean? So when you are in a situation where someone is pointing something that you need to adjust about your character or about your personality. It takes a lot of humility to accept it. It takes a lot of humility to accept it. But when you accept it and start working on it, that is growth. That is growth. It's the same like back to the sickness um, uh, scenario or analogy again. If your doctor told you this is what is wrong with you and then you started arguing with your doctor, <laughs> The doctor knows better. They were trained for this, right? Even though sometimes a second or third opinion is, is needed. But at least learn to trust certain people and their intentions or why they're pointing certain things about you. If they have the, the best intention and based on the track record of your friendship, don't fight them. Know that they really want the best for you and they just want to have 
a good um, interaction, a good friendship with you. You know, so again, the worst kind of problem is when you don't know you have a problem. Some people don't know how to come across. They think they're perfect. They think that I used to be like that. <laughs> I used to think something was wrong with everyone but me. Until I started doing inner work and, you know, taking off certain layers and asking hard questions. I'm like, okay, okay, I guess I need to, to, to fix this. And then when I had kids as well, oh my God, they exposed to me. They exposed all the things I thought were right. I, nope. So it is important that we find out what really is the problem. It is important that we are willing to look inside as uncomfortable as it can be. When you look inside and you find what is wrong, start working towards that. It's not something that can happen overnight, right? But the most important thing is that self-awareness. It's a journey. It's not something you're going to see Oh, I think this is where I need to improve in my character. I don't think just knowing that it's just going to happen overnight. No, it's a journey. It's a journey that for some people it will take years to undo certain things about themselves. But once that work is complete, I don't know if it ever gets completed, but at least there is an improvement that happens, all right? Because I think that consciously, since I started working on myself, it's it's been years, really. It's been years. And sometimes I feel like I'm not making any progress at all. I'm like, these things are still showing up. I thought we were done here, right? These habits are still showing up. I thought we were done. So, But the most important thing about self-improvement and personal growth is that it does not happen overnight, okay? It's a journey. But a journey that is important for us to be on. The thing is that some people have not even started that journey yet. And hence, this continually repeat um, uh, these experiences they've had over and over and over. You know, if you're having the same experience with A and having the same experience with B and having the same experience with C and having the same experience with D, and these are people from different backgrounds, the common denominator is you. You need to step back and like, okay, Maybe there's something I need to fix here. Don't just say, no, something is wrong with them. Something is wrong with her. Something is wrong with him. So No, it cannot always be that they are the ones that something is wrong with. It cannot always be. So find out with humility by yourself. Self-introspection is important. Uh, self Awareness is important. The journey to growth, the journey to become the better version of yourself requires that we all, we all look within and like, what is wrong with me? Where can I improve? The worst kind of problem is the one you don't know you have. If we step into the new year without facing some of the issues, you know, we are going to repeat or have the same outcome that we have been uncomfortable with for a long time, you know. That's why self-awareness is critical. Yes, someone said in the comment, um, self-awareness, yeah. Self-awareness is critical. Without it, without it, you will always think everyone else is wrong with you. You know, uh, I'm personally very grateful for the progress I have made in my life. I'm not there yet. But I'm not a person I was, you know. And it is quite an exciting journey for me. So, yes, someone mentioned self-awareness in the, in the comments. Yeah, self-awareness is really the ability to see yourself clearly and objectively 
through reflection and introspection and taking feedback from others. All right. And feedback, like I mentioned, is very difficult to take. Look, there are times I've fought people, you know, <laughs> and I've argued with people. No, it's not true. What you said it was not true. But sometimes when I'm on my own, I'm like, hmm, maybe they have a point. Maybe she had a point. Maybe he had a point. And then from there, I'm like, okay, I guess it's time to do something about this. Self-awareness is critical. No one is perfect, of course. And I'm not asking anyone to aim for perfection. Perfection is unattainable. <laughs> when something is perfect, it's boring, actually. It's boring. It is our imperfections that make us human, you know, but you need to be aware of what those imperfections are and constantly work on yourself to improve, not to become perfect. Because once you become perfect, you've just created another problem for yourself. You become unrelatable. People can relate to perfection because no one is. When you are too perfect, then you isolate yourself. Because have you ever tried interacting with a saint? Or have you ever tried having a relationship with a saint? Someone who is never wrong? Someone who is perfect? It's a torture. But when you are around people who embrace their humanity and people who understand that they are not perfect, you feel at home, right? You feel like, oh, I'm not alone here. So as much as you want to improve, we should not aim for perfection. That is the wrong target. That's the wrong goal. Just aim on small improvements, starting from self-awareness. Once you know that thing is there, that is one big battle you have won. Once you know there's something about your character, about the way you talk, about the way you respond to people, about the way you, I don't know what example is to give, but when, once you are aware of that, and you can start tuning it, you know. Sometimes it will show off over and over. Even after a year of you realizing it, after two years or three years of you realizing it, you will realize, oh my God, this thing still pops, popped up again. It is a journey. It's the journey, not a destination. It's not something you finally just go and like, oh, I've arrived. Okay, now we can go back, you know. It's a constant journey. But you need to be aware of what that problem is because it's dangerous to have a problem you don't know you have especially a problem with your character, which is really the basic basis of our conversation, right? If you take it to business, it's the same. Having a problem in your business you don't know you have, that business can go bankrupt. That business can collapse because you don't know what exactly the problem is. And maybe sometimes people are trying to point it to you and you're like, no, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Then you wake up one day, and the business has gone bankrupt or the business has become obsolete, especially as we are in the digital era. You know, some people are still holding so tight, so tight to the brick and mortar system. And people are trying to warn them, hey, you need to digitize. They're like, no, I'm not an internet person. <laughs> They're like, no, internet is not for me. You're not going to solve your problem if you cannot acknowledge that there is a problem. So I think that was really the point of this conversation that the worst kind of problem a person can have is the one they don't know they have. If you don't know you have a problem in your life, in your business, in your job, some people are so unaware of what is happening that they can lose their job because of that and they'll still not know. So let's think about this as we get into the new year, as you get into the next season of your life, pause and think, what have I been missing all these years? What am I missing? What am I missing? When you ask those type of questions, you will discover the solution. You will realize things you have, you know, 
things that have been going unnoticed, it all boils down again to curiosity, which has been the topic for the past two videos I've done, I think. So, yeah, let me know what you think uh, in the comment section. And thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And thank you for your comments and your likes and your shares. 